talk about good news and the gospel. So here we go. Matthew 4, 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness, all kinds of disease among the people. Uh, Mark 1, 14 and 15 says these words. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe the gospel. The gospel is good news. It is the message of good. Uh, the Greek words that are put together on that one, uh, it's ou, e-u, which means good, and then angelon, which is a message or a messenger. So being a messenger of good. And so God, the gospel is about God's goodness to us in Jesus, and thus making us agents of good. The church is to be a model of goodness. God designed you and me in bringing us together to display and declare the goodness to the world. First uh, Chronicles 16, 23 says, Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Mark 1, 1 uh, says these words, In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Uh, right there is how that gospel starts. Okay, that phrase, uh, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was actually borrowed off of Roman uh, legal format when they were describing the coming of an emperor or the coming of a ruler. And primarily it was for Octavius Caesar, who would be one of the greatest emperors leading them. Octavius would win every battle he ever fought, he would win. Every, uh, for prosperity and the expansion of the kingdom, for roads, buildings, he, he actually enlarged Rome considerably. He prospered in everything he did. In fact, they began to call him Augustus, which was the increasing God. They called him the Savior. They, they said the bringer of glad tidings. And all of, this is how they began to describe the emperor uh, Augustus. And when uh, Mark begins his gospel, John Mark, he says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And all of the Christians at that time knew the shorthand that it, w it was speaking at that time. That it, it, what Mark was saying, hey, there, there is a king in town, but it, we're not talking about Augustus, uh, Octavius Augustus here. We are talking about the king and the emperor we're talking about here is Jesus. It's, a, it's really interesting under Octavius Augustus, he made efforts to, to control and legalize morality. He began to, on marriage, he was really disgusted with the divorce rate that was going on in the Roman Empire. And it, he began to make some laws. Hey, I'm going to get this so that everything's under control. And he also, um, th there is also a number of other uh, areas that had just slipped in the morality. And he was trying to get them back to some place of values. And finally, Ag Augustus Octavius, he finally says, he says, hey, I've tried to change them. But unless you change their hearts, there is no way that people will be changed. He, he recognized that you just couldn't externally enforce that upon people and see the transformation that you were desiring. What needed to happen, and this is what the Christian uh, world began to emphasize, you need King Jesus. Hey, there, there is one who has never lost a battle. He has defeated every foe, every, every devil, every demon, every hardness of heart, Every pride, every area, every disease, every this death, there's only one who is the victor over all things, and that is Jesus Christ. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the emperor. All hail King Jesus. That is who we need to lift up. And the, so the gospel has come forth now in the Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
That is the promise that is, that is made right there. Um, there, are, there are around um, uh, 65,000 ultra marathoners out there in the world uh, right now. Can you believe that, that there's 65,000 ultra marathoners? And with over 1,400 events every year, okay? An ultra marathon, how many know what an ultra marathon is, okay? I see those hands, all right? The ultra marathon is anything that's over just a normal marathon. So that's like 26 miles and a few feet. Uh, that, that is a, a, a normal marathon, okay? How many have ever ran a marathon? Is there, there any? I see that hand. Yeah, way to go. Okay, good for you. All right. <laughs> yeah. A, no, a normal marathon goes at 50K, which is about 30 some miles. And uh, so that's a normal ultra marathon. Uh, but then they, they go as long as 3,100 miles. There, there is an ultra marathon. What, why anybody would want to do that, I don't know. But uh, 100 miles is a normal race for an ultra marathon. And I, we know a few of those individuals. Uh, the most famous story uh, of the first ultra marathoner was that of the Battle of Marathon. And it's a traditional story that relates to Pheidippides, okay, in 530 to 490 B.C., and you'll see why his death date was soon at 490 BC. He was an Athenian courier, okay, or herald, or a hemerdrome. They called him a day runner, and um, the professional running courier, a day long runner. Before there was FedEx, there was pe there was PedEx, okay. Uh, he was sent to to Sparta to request help when the Persians landed at Marathon, Greece. He ran about 150 miles in two days. And then he ran back another 150 miles. He then ran the 25 miles to the battlefield near Marathon and back to Athens to announce the great victory over Persia in the Battle of Marathon with the word as stated in Greek, karete nikomen, which literally means rejoice, we are winners. Then he collapsed and died. Okay? Yeah. So the moral of the story, don't be an ultra marathoner. Okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> the, the, what it here, emphasis here is rejoice. We are winners. The good news is based upon a victory that has been won. When the enemy is defeated, you are victorious. That is the good news. How many know we are victors in Jesus Christ? We are winners in Jesus Christ. Rejoice. We've won, people. What Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago when he paid the price for your sin and mine, fulfilling 315 prophecies and then uh, dying on that cross, uh, being buried, rose again, uh, send it into heaven, poured out the Holy Spirit, the beginning of the, the church, and then all of a sudden there is something that can be said. Hey, we've got good news, people. We, we, a, a, a battle has been won. A victory has been won over, over the darkness, over the devil, over sin, over, the, over death. Jesus Christ is the victor. He is the champion who has won the battle. So, uh, in the book of Isaiah, the picture that is drawn in, in Isaiah 52 is that the, the, of, a, of a long distance runner. And he, uh, this messenger comes with news. And he's, he's run back to Jerusalem, and he's come there, and he says, Hey, we, the, just as the, the victory happened in Egypt, just as the Assyrian Empire has been destroyed, Babylon has fallen. The, the people that have been captive in Babylon, they're now free. They can come back from captivity and be released and come back into the freedom that they once enjoyed as God's people. And the quote that he reads in Isaiah 52, 7 is these words. He says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of them who brings good news, who proclaim peace, 
who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns, our God reigns. There is something that people, we can rejoice in. The enemy has been defeated. The foe has been broken. There has been victory given once and for all into, to, through Jesus Christ. We have peace. We proclaim it. There is good news. And it's just like over the hills, we see that runner coming. Everybody, our God reigns. We have the victory. Well, Paul picks this up, uh, the Apostle Paul, in his thought to the book of Romans. And in the New Testament, he describes this message of the gospel of Christ going out. He says in Romans 10, 15, And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Hallelujah. You know, Paul is, is going through the gospel in the book of Romans. He starts off and he says, hey, everybody is bad. You know, we, we've, all, we've all sinned. You know, he says, hey, there's really bad sinners. Then there's moral sinners. And then there's people who are just, uh, just trying to perform and do it on their own. And he says, everyone's a sinner. And then he says, hey, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then he says, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That that warfare that is ended there is now completely over. And then he says, hey, from that point on, the Holy Spirit is working in your life to change and to transform you from the inside out to make you more and more like Jesus. And then he goes on and he says, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he says, all that, all that guilt all that shame, all that troubled conscience, the despair of not being right with God, it is over. You can be free by the power of the Spirit. And you need to hear the message, the good news in Jesus. Rejoice. We've won, everybody. We've won through Jesus Christ. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. As you live in Jesus Christ, there is a freedom like none other. There is a peace like none other. There is a joy like none other that comes through the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you guys with me today? Just give me a big amen on that one. Hallelujah. We, you know, Christ sends his couriers. He sends his heralds. He sends his messengers. The messengers preach. People hear. Hearers believe. The believers call on the name of the Lord. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He, everybody, just raise your right hand, okay? All right. I am a, see, say it, I am, I am a messenger of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God has commissioned me with a task to give the gospel to the nations. Hallelujah. Everybody say amen. You can go home now. Okay. Second, a little more here. Okay. Second uh, Samuel 18, uh, Karen, uh, Pastor Karen, my wife, uh, preached this uh, last uh, in December last year, but it, I, I thought I'd preach it again, okay? <laughs> Second Samuel 18, there's a story of King David, uh, son Absalom, and he's rebelling, and there's a civil war that resulted. And King David's uh, men defeat Absalom, and Absalom is killed. And there's two messengers that want to take the message back to King David, to the, the stronghold which he was staying at. And the first one was Ahimeaz. He was a priest's uh, son, and he was like, he was really excited. He wanted to share the, take the message uh, back to, um, to David. He says, hey, look, give me the message, give me the message. 
And there's another one there who was a Kushite. A Kushite would be somebody from modern uh, South Sudan. So in East Africa, how many know East Africans are some of the greatest long distance runners there ever were, are and ever will be? You know, they are always, even to this day, great uh, long distance runners. And so the, the Kushite sits there and waits for the full message. The, the uh, Hemias, he, say, he knows the victory has happened, but he begins to run without the rest of the message. He gets to King David, and he says, David, hey, what? and then they look at, they look at him, and in verse uh, 18, 27, he says, and the watchman said, I think the running of the first is like the running of Hemias. He just had a great running style, I guess, the son of Zadok. And the king said, is he a good man? He is a good man and comes with good news. And so he does come with good news. He comes with the good news. They had won the battle. And David asked the question, well, how is my son Absalom? And he says, oh, there was a uh, skirmish afterwards, and I don't know what quite happened. And David says, step aside. Okay? Then the Cushite, he comes in. He runs in finally. And he comes and he says, hey, here's what's happened. The battle has been won. May all of your enemies be like the, the usurper, okay? The one who rebelled. And David cries at that point. But anyways, he came with the full message. You know, as Christians, as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, we can come with only half a message. You know, we can have where we say, how many would like to believe in Jesus and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And how many know that's a good message? That's a great message, right? And you, you, somebody raises their hands, and it's a beautiful thing, right? But it really is half the message. There's another story that, hey, you're going to have to repent, and you're going to have to turn away from your sin, and you need to follow the Lord and give your... Give yourselves under the lordship of Jesus Christ. It's just not he's your savior. He's also now becoming your lord. Let me give you this example. The winter of 86, okay? I'm in downtown Portland for an evangelism class. I have to share the gospel to a bunch of people in Pioneer Square. I have with me a little gospel booklet, okay? And it's called, Are You Going to Heaven? So I have this booklet, and I find an individual. He's a street person, even back in 1986. He's a street person down there. And uh, I open the little booklet, and it says, hey, are you going to heaven? And the guy, oh, I don't know. And he's taking these little liqueurs, or like little liquors, you know? And he's going, yeah, 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 okay. What's the next question? You know, are, are you going to, how do you know you're going to heaven? And he says, is it because you're an American? Is it because you go to church? Is it because you feel you're a nice person? And he says, no, no. He's just going, doing these liquors, you know, he's taking them. And, and then he, he says, hey, here's what it means to become a Christian, okay? And, this, and give your life to the Lord. And talk about sin and talk about the separation between God and man. And they need to ask Jesus into your life. And the guy, the guy every stage of the way, he's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally, we pray the prayer right at the end, which is a sinner's prayer. That, hey, would you ask Jesus into your life? And he says, yeah, yeah, I'll pray this prayer. And he just takes his liquors and starts drinking it, it again. And I stop and I say, buddy, do you realize what this is going to take? This is going to cost you your whole life. That you're going to have to give up the things that you want to do, and you're going to have to follow the Jesus and give up what he and give yourself to what he wants you to give. It's going to, he's got to become Lord of your life. And you go, and the guy, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, we prayed the prayer, and I, I thought, hey, this is over. You know, I'll never see this guy again, and, uh, you know, just let him run, right? And, well, the interesting thing that happened with this guy was in uh, th that summer of 86, he ended up connecting with some uh, YWAMers, okay, with Youth with a Mission individuals. And they took him to a camp, and he got a little more discipleship training there. He ended up getting water baptized. He ended up getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And all so in 
uh, September of 86, he shows up at the church that I was serving in, in Portland for, for in, during Bible college days. And all of a sudden, he shows up and he says, hey, do you remember me? And I said, sort of. He's all cleaned up and everything. And it's like, his name, yeah, Johnny? Yeah, yeah. He says, hey, here's what has happened in my life. But it comes to a point, like we can soft sell the gospel. It's like, hey, oh, yeah, I got that. No, here it is, people. It, it is a full message. It's not just half the message. It's a complete message. Jesus Christ is your Savior. He forgives you of your sin, but he wants to deliver you from darkness as well. He wants to be in the first place. Jesus Christ, all hail King Jesus. He needs to be the Lord of your life as well. And that is the full gospel message. Somebody give me an amen on that one, okay? So, um, 2 Kings uh, 6, 7, there's a story of the siege of Samaria. And so the Syrians are attacking the northern Israel, uh, and they've done a complete siege. Everybody, there's a famine uh, in the, the city. They're dying for the bread of life. They're dying for food and everything like that. And the Lord raises up three unlikely heroes. He raises up three lepers. They have, um, they're outside the city, and they, they say, well, what should we do? Should we go back into the city? And uh, we're going to die there. This is like a comedy team, you know. Like we're like, ah, we'll die there. Well, let's stay here then. And say, like, well, we'll die here, okay? And then they say, well, why don't we go for the Syrians? At least they got food. And then they say, yeah, let's go, and then we'll die there, you know. And anyways, these three lepers... How many, how many ever ever thought uh, for, for yourself that you feel disqualified? That you, you don't feel God could use you to bring about good news for people? You, you feel useless. You feel, I'm not equipped. I feel like I don't have the tools. I feel like I'm, I'm shy. Evangelism, it just isn't my thing. Telling other people about Jesus, it just scares me, you know? And what the, the things that actually feel like to disqualify you actually qualify you. And then it's the, in your weakness, God can be strong. That is when God can put his grace and his power on you, and he can do mighty things through your life. Anyways, so we, we have this, um, uh, these lepers, they move towards the um, Syrian camp, that was around uh, uh, Samaria at that time. And as they're coming towards the camp, all of a sudden they hear the, the Syrian camp hears the sound of a noise of a mighty army. How many know it happens in the spirit, spirit in the heavenly realm before it happens on earth? There are supernatural things that take place. And as they come into the camp, all of a sudden, the, the Syrians had fled, and they had left everything. Their, their tents, their clothes, their plunder. And the, there, the lepers begin to dig into everything. They start eating. They start uh, putting on the clothes and taking the gold and all the rest. And then you read these words in 2 Kings 7, 9. It says, Then they said to one another, We are not doing right. This is, day is a day of good news, and we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. Do you see that? And so... This, this is more of a question here, okay? This is a day of good news. The question is, do we remain silent? Okay, how many are thankful for the blessings of the Lord on your life? All right. How many are thankful for Jesus has forgiven you of sin? How many are thankful that you are a child of God? How many are thankful that the Holy Spirit is in your life? How many are... This is glorious, people, that you have a relationship with God. You actually have a personal relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That is phenomenal. That is worth the price right there of admission right there, okay? There, then, on top of that, eternal life. 
Everybody say, come on. All right? You know, do, do we remain silent with all of what God has given us, or do we go and tell? People, I am challenging each and every one of us in this day and age that we live in. I know we have comfort zones. I know we have personality, and God uses our personality. But I want to challenge each and every one of us as ambassadors of Jesus Christ to be sharing the good news to other people that are around us and the opportunities that he gives us to to open up and, and share there. Everybody say amen. Amen. All right. I want to just read something out of Romans here. And uh, if you don't have a life group at this time, I have a Romans Bible class. Uh, And and also Karen has one too on um, Wednesday nights. There's God's Garage going on Wednesdays and there's other life groups. You can go on the website and look at all of them. But mine and Karen's is on Romans, and so we've been teaching on that. But I want to read this out of Romans 1, 14 and 17. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone. Everybody say everyone. Who believes for the Jew first and for the Greek. For in it, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. And as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The righteousness of God, God comes and he covers our sin with that and made as right as he is. We are given his righteousness, not a righteousness of our own, but a righteousness that belongs to God. What a treasure. It says three things here. I am a debtor, I am ready, and I am not ashamed. I am a debtor. The first thought I want to bring across is is the, the idea of the debtor isn't so much Oh, I'm under obligation. Oh, man, I just obligated in the sense of uh, works mindset. Oh, God's not going to love me if I don't do this. What he's saying is there's a holy obligation that has been given you, but he says, I'm a debtor. Think of it this way, okay? God gives me $1,000, okay? And he says, hey, I want you to give it to Randy back there. I want you to give that $1,000. As long as I hold on to that $1,000, I am a debtor to Randy. And what the Lord has given us is all of his promises, all of his goodness, all of his love. And he says, hey, I want you to relay this. But right now, you're a debtor until you release that, until you give that to those people. And each and every one of us have a debt that God has placed upon us, a responsibility that we are to relay that to to others. And I am ready to preach the gospel. God has, here's my question. Do you feel equipped to share with other people? On Tuesday nights, um, the camp hosts aren't here today. Uh, but they're running uh, the Alpha class. The Alpha class is a great class. If you're new to the faith, if you are looking into the Christian faith, that is a great class for uh, getting all the pieces to the puzzle of understanding what the gospel is about. But it it is also a great opportunity uh, to ask questions that you may have never asked before. So uh, Tuesday nights at 6 p.m., that the Alpha class is there, and it, but also the Alpha class is just a good reminder, a refresher of how to share the gospel. Sometimes we, we just want to go for the jugular on people, and sometimes it's a process of just sharing in a reasonable, persuasive ways, in loving ways, the goodness of God, and just constantly addressing the questions that people have in their heart and things that they are working through. 
We need to be ready to share the gospel. God's reconciled us through Jesus Christ. God's forgiven our sins. God has made us a child. God has given us his Holy Spirit. He's began to transform our life. He's made us a part of a new community because we have put our faith in Jesus. And it's understanding all of those things and the saying, hey, I'm, I'm ready to go. And the last one here, I just love this phrase, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every one of us, let's all stand. Let's have the musicians come. Let's all raise our hand. Hands, plural. Let's, Father, I just pray for each and every person in this room, Lord, that you would fill us with bold declaration. Lord, I pray that you would help us move through our fears and our anxieties, all the things that are holding us back, Lord, from, Lord, from that sharing with our family member, Lord, sharing with a neighbor, sharing with a brother or, or somebody who's at the workplace. Lord, I pray, give opportunities. Lord, but I pray, Lord, that a bold faith through the work of the Holy Spirit would begin to take a hold of every heart. Lord, we have good news. We have the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us be bold, Lord. I just pray that. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your empowerment, Lord, right now. Romans 10, 15. But how shall they preach unless they are sent? And as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. Father, just we commission everybody today. Lord, let the love of God speak of good things, speak of the great things of God, bringing peace to people lives that are in turmoil, Lord, to where they have things going on in their, their minds of just deep darkness in their soul and heart. Lord, I pray the words that we would speak into their life, Lord, would scatter the darkness and bring the light. Lord, I pray if there are people in this room who will cast out demons in people's lives, Lord, and see them set free. Lord, that they'd go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, that there would be healings that would take place when we see somebody who is sick. Lord, we'd lay hands on them. Lord, and the power of God would flow through them, through your vessels and your instruments, and there would be healings that would take place. Lord, I pray, Lord, for gifts of the Spirit to be released. Words of knowledge. Lord, and insights into people's lives, words of encouragement and hope. Lord, that people who have given up hope, Lord, would see a, a, a spark of light, Lord, that would shine through them. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we